Oh, how we love you. Oh, yeah. Turn it up for me, just even slightly. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Mm. Yes. Mm. You're such a wonderful God. The Bible says you do all things well. And we praise you for that. We thank you that we can have this service here. We thank you that you have, by your grace and mercy, allowed this church to survive and thrive, even during arguably one of the worst trials and crises this world has ever seen. You have kept us, you have sustained us, you have empowered us, you have emboldened us, and for that we give you praise, Father. Oh, we thank you for Jesus today. Oh, how we love him. Oh, how we praise him. Oh, how we worship him. Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. He's our rock, and he's our refuge. He's our rock in a weary land. He's our shelter in the storm. He's our peace in the time of trouble. And we thank God for Jesus. Now, Holy Ghost, have your will and have your way. Work with this humble servant through this vessel of clay. Touch my lips, touch my mind, and help me to encourage your people on today. And Father, help us to receive revelation knowledge that will dwell in our hearts and stay so that we might serve the purpose of God in our generation. To you be the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Give God some praise, amen. Somebody say with me, say, I will, I will receive, receive revelation knowledge, knowledge. today that's going to bless my life. All right. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. In the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, chapter 11 and verse number 1. And the scripture now reads, you can stop the music. In the book of Luke, chapter number 11, and verse number 1, it reads, Now it came to pass, as he was praying, that's talking about Jesus, in a certain place, when he ceased praying, that one of his disciples said to him, now it doesn't say which disciple, but you can almost guess which one. Who's usually the one that speaks up and speaks out? Peter. <laughs> anyway, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Somebody say, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, verse 2. So Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, our Father. Say that with me. Our Father, there it is, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Church, I'm teaching from the life-changing, life-blessing, and life-building message today, entitled, You Have a Great Father. You Have a Great Father. Can I get an amen? Amen. I said, you have a great father. Now, I want to dedicate this message to um, to all of us in whatever situation we find ourselves. What do I mean by that? I mean this, that some of us ask 
actually never knew our fathers. Some of us wish we never knew our fathers, praise the Lord. Some of us are missing our fathers, like my wife, like myself. And some of us still have our fathers. And some of us appreciate the ones we have, and some of us need to appreciate them even more. But I stopped by here today to Truth and Love Christian Church to let you know that whatever your situation is, I want you to really focus today on the fact that not only do you have a father, but you have a great father. Say with me. Say, I have a great father. I have a great father. Now, Here's the thing I want you to get. Jesus' resurrection from the dead proved to the disciples that our Heavenly Father is real. I'll say it again. Jesus' resurrection from the dead. All right. Matthew, hallelujah, chapter twenty. Eight, his resurrection from the dead proved that we have a great heavenly father. Well, here's what I mean by that. If you know your Bible, you know that basically in the Old Testament, uh, God was not known to them as father. In fact, if he was known to them as anything, he was known to them as the God of their fathers, not as God, our father. He was known to them as their God, and they were known to him as his people. Can I get an amen? amen. So then here comes Jesus in the New Testament, and he's just, just, just blowing everybody's mind. Because as you just read, he said, our father. He called God Father. I mean, the Jews called him Adonai. And they called him Yahweh. And they called him Yahweh Elohim, which is, we translate, Lord God. But, but they did not call him Father because they did not know him as Father. But here comes Jesus, and he calls him Father. Well, there's a good reason that Jesus called him Father. And you know what it was? Because he is and was Jesus' father. In other words, Jesus is the only son of God. The more I get, the more I get that revelation, <clears throat> the more my faith is strong and convicted and sure. See, 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 Jesus is the only son of God. So it made sense that he would be the one to introduce us to God as Father. Because for Jesus, God is his Father. God was his Father. Amen? Amen. So, so then, <clears throat> excuse me, when they asked how do we pray, they're thinking he was going to say, well, God, Adonai, Jehovah, you know, hallowed be thy name. He says, you're going to pray like this, our Father. Now, when he said that, he was actually prophesying. He was saying, this is how you're going to pray. You, literally, what he was really saying is, he's not your father yet. Because I have not yet died, shed my blood, to pay for the forgiveness of your sins so that you could be what? You could be uh, adopted into the family. Y your, your sins had to be paid for so that you could be a part of this holy family. In other words, the holy son had to die for an unholy people so that they could be a part of a holy family. Anybody get this today? Amen. The Holy Son, the one and only Son of God who was holy, died for the unholy so that we could be adopted in the family of the holy. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Give, give Jesus some praise. Thank you, Jesus. And then... What happened is, because we said yes to Jesus, 
yes to his perfect sacrifice, we said the prayer of salvation, guess what happened? The Holy Spirit then came to do what? Dwell on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. Say Holy Ghost in me. Holy Ghost in me. Say Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in you now because you have been born again. You have been born from above. And watch this. Now you are like Jesus. See, Jesus was the only son of God. But what he did when he died to pay for our sins, he he allowed us to be adopted into the family. So now we too are the what? Sons of God. That includes you daughters. Amen. Sons meaning in this case children of God. Say I'm a child of God. So watch this now. The Holy Spirit dwelling and communicating within us proves to us that our Heavenly Father is real. Do you see? In other words, there are two things that prove to us that God is the Father, the Heavenly Father, and that he's real. One is that Jesus resurrected from the dead because Jesus called him Holy Heavenly Father, our Father. But if Jesus didn't resurrect from the dead, we'd be doubting that, that Jesus is really the Savior. Do you see what I'm saying? But when he resurrected from the dead, that proved that everything he said was true. So then when he told us to pray and call him Holy Heavenly Father, now we know that what he said was true. And then in addition to that, we have another witness that he's our father. And who is that from? The Holy Spirit. First witness who? Jesus. Second witness who? Holy Spirit. Let me say it again. The first witness that, that, that God is our father and that he's real. In other words, because if he's not real, what's the use in praying to him? If he's not, if you ever, what, what, is, what is that? Anybody there? Is anybody there? Anybody on the line? If he's not up there, and he's not our father. If he's not up there, he's not listening. If he's not our father, then he's not concerned, right? right? But Jesus proved in his resurrection that he's real and that he's our father. And then who? what's the second uh, proof? The second proof is that what? That the Holy Spirit. Next slide, please. The second proof is that the Holy Spirit dwelling and communicating within us proves to us that our heavenly father is real. In other words... We don't have to waste our time trying to argue with people that God is real. Say amen. amen. How do we know he's real? Hey, because watch what the scripture says about the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? Next slide, please. The Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 16, the Spirit himself. Look at this, church. The Spirit himself. Say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Say himself. himself. He bears witness or he testifies communicates with our spirit. God's Holy Spirit with our what? Human spirit. God's Holy Spirit with our human spirit. God's Holy Spirit speaks to our what? Human spirit. Human spirit that we are the children of God. Did you see that? In other words, I know a lot of people want God to tell them what their future is, but the first thing he tells you once you get born again and the Holy Ghost is dwelling on the inside of you, is the most important thing you need to know. He says, Psst, hey, guess what? You say what? He says, you are now a child of God. Did you see that? Did you see that? Now, I know a lot of people like to say this. It sounds so uh, kumbaya-ish that we all are children of God, but the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says all men are creation of God. That is his highest creation. But you're only a child of God if you get born again through Christ Jesus. And immediately the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit speaks to your human spirit and says, I need to announce to you today that you are now a child of the Most High God. Now you ought to give God some praise for that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say with me. Say, I'm a child, I'm a child. of the Most High God. In other words, God's spirit is in you confirming that. And I need you to know that no matter what happens, COVID, civil unrest, or whatever else is coming down the road, guess what? You are never alone. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I said you are never alone. There are some people whose fathers passed so long ago. It's just, I mean, just a long, long time ago. And if, if, if it weren't for the fact that you 
have this heavenly father, you would feel fatherless. But I need you to know today you're not fatherless. Amen. There's some people that never really knew their father. I need you to know today you're not fatherless. You might be missing your father today, but I need you to know today, wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is, and he's witnessing to you that he represents Jesus and the Father, and wherever you are, you are not fatherless. Say amen, somebody say, I'm not fatherless. I'm not fatherless. And not only are you not fatherless, but you have a great father. So point number one for today, let's get right into it. Because you have a great father, point number one for today is, you know you are great. I don't want anybody to leave here today without getting that revelation. I'll say that again. Because you have a great father, you know you are great. I said, you know you are great. What do you, well, how do I know I'm great? Somebody say, it's in the genes. Ha! I said, it's in the genes. Do you know what happened when you got born again? I'm going to tell you. You got regenerated. You got regened. You, you now have the genes of your father through Christ Jesus. Now, come on, somebody. Y'all not praying with me. I said, when you got born again, you listen, do you know how when you go to the doctor's office, they always ask you, they take a medical history, does anybody in your family have high blood pressure, heart disease, uh, uh, cancer, uh, diabetes? They want to know all this stuff. Why? Because it can run through the blood. Well, I got Nate news for you. You got, listen, you got... You got a blood uh, uh, conversion. You got a blood transfusion. You, you got a new blood, honey. You got some new blood. You now have the genes of your father, and he's a great father. That means that you have great genes in you now. You know, uh, it's an amazing thing. You know how they say, like father, like son? You know how they say the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree? Well, that's, that's what you are now. You're the fruit of the great I am. That means you're a part of the great I am family. Somebody say great I am. I am. I am. <laughs> you are you am a part of the great I am family. You need to know that because you have a great father, you are great. You don't need somebody to tell you. Listen, do, do you know I was watching uh Harriet Tubman uh just a few days ago that movie. And it's a beautiful thing because it's not just a, a black history story. It's a, it's a gospel story. She was a born-again believer. This is how you want to talk about black history. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We really want to talk about black history? If you want to really talk about black history, you need to talk about the gospel history. Because them black folk didn't make it without the Lord. It, you, in other words, you can be, people got it wrong talking about, well, I don't believe in the Bible because the Bible uh, endorsed slavery. You're a fool. You don't understand. The Bible doesn't endorse slavery. The Bible's telling you that no matter what condition you're in, if you get born again, your life is great. You're great in the eyes of God. You have great value. You come into a great family. That's why Harriet Tubman was able to do what she was able to do because guess what? She was in slavery, but slavery wasn't in her. Do you hear what I'm saying today? They said, Harriet, you can't, you can't do that. She said, watch me. She said, you can't go back there and try to get them folks. She said, they said, you can't read. She said, well, you're right. I can't read the signs, but I can hear Holy Ghost. I can hear the Spirit, and the Spirit will tell me when to stop. The Spirit will tell me when to go. I won't have to figure anything out. The Spirit will just lead me and guide me into all truth. Church, I need you to know today that because you got born again from a great father, you are great. Yes, I'm glad that we're finally, there's a, 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 a revolution going on in this country. Uh, what they call a, 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 a rethinking or a, a revolution of white consciousness where uh, white people are waking up to the fact that, that, that they have been wrong, that they have lied about history, that they have, had, as they say, had their foot on our neck or knee on our neck for a long time. But I'm here to tell you that when you get born again and you come into the knowledge of the truth, you understand from day one by the Holy Spirit, it don't matter what anybody else says about you, you are a child of the most high God, and you are great. You were born for greatness. You were reborn for greatness. We were all born in sin and what? Shaped in iniquity. But when you got born again, the greatness, the listen, that great gene is now in you. 
The gene for greatness is in you. Are you hearing me today? That gene for greatness is in you. That's why the Lord said in Jeremiah 33 and 3, he said, call on me and I'll show you great, come on somebody, great and mighty things that you have not seen. Do you know what the Lord is saying to you? He said, you're part of a great family. He said, and you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, the, 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 the thing about this is, in a natural example, the thing about this is, when I think about uh, this, I think about myself and I think about my father. My father and my mother uh, decided to give me my father's name. And, uh, you know, that was a, a blessing and a burden because it's a great name. Walter Tucker is a great name. His name still reigns in the earth today. There are so many people that still come up to me today. I mean, literally, your dad, your dad, your dad, your dad. And I'm telling you, uh, you can look at it and say that it was a burden, but at the same time, what I realized when I came into the knowledge of the Lord is that uh, I had a great uh, legacy and heritage to live up to. And greatness runs through my veins. It runs through our family. And I need you to understand that the same way in the natural that uh, the Tucker family has always been a great family. His father before him, you know, they had during the time that was just uh, a generation removed from slavery, his father uh, 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 was the principal of the Booker T. Washington High School. His father actually was uh, a secretary to Booker T. Washington. And all of his eight children got master's degrees. Now this is back in the early 1900s. All his children had master's degrees and three of them became doctors. But why? Because there was greatness in their genes. But I'm here to tell you that if your father was a rolling stone, if your father was a wife beater, if your father was a crackhead, if your father was no good, when you get born again, you come into greatness. I mean, you need to understand that. You come into greatness. And you don't need a white person, a black person, the Pope, or anybody else to validate you, to tell you, all right, well, now we want, we are going to recognize you. And, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, when, when you get reparations, you're going to be recognized and validated. I don't need reparations to be validated. I know that I'm, listen, I, listen, I don't need nobody to, to, to tell me that I'm great. I, because Jesus died for me. Did you hear what I said? And he brought me into his family, and it's a great family, and I am an heir. And the last time I looked, he said, I was an heir with Christ Jesus. Did you hear what I said? Somebody said, I'm an heir with Jesus. Say, in fact, I'm seated with him in heavenly places. Isn't that something? So because you have a great father, you know you are great. Like I said, I was a little boy like Joseph walking around, and everywhere I walked, people kept saying to me, you have a great father. You have a great father. What do you think that did to me? What do you think that did to me? It made me want to look to what? Inspire greatness. That's exactly right. And I'm here to tell you that if you didn't have that kind of father in the natural, you need to know that by faith in Jesus' name, that's the kind of father you have. And he knows your name. Listen, he knows your name. He knows every hair on your head. But see, what you got to realize is, you know, you always want to put a butt there and say, but I don't see him. I can't touch him. That's not the kind of father I want. But you need to understand that by faith in Jesus' name, he sticketh closer than a brother. He sticketh closer than a father. He's right there. Listen, even your natural father can't go with you when you go into that operating room. Even your natural father came with you if they close those prison doors on you. Even your natural father can't be there in the midnight hour when you sleep and have a nightmare. But Jesus, ha, he'll be there with you. Come on, somebody. You have, because you have a great father, you know you're great. You don't need anybody to tell you now. If you didn't know it before, you know it now. Somebody say, I'm great, I'm great. in Christ Jesus. In Christ. Yeah, you have greatness. Greatness is all in your genes. It's, it's, in, your, it's in your DNA. Come on. It's in you now. It's in you now. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It's greatness in your blood. Somebody say, it's in the blood. It's in the blood. It's in the blood. Come on, somebody. It's in the blood. And then because you have a great father, watch this now. You know you have access to great things. Because you have a father, a great father, you know you have access to great things. You know, there's a whole lot of folk, uh, black people over the last several decades have really come up materially speaking. You know, there's folk that got all kinds of stuff. Black people, uh, Oprah Winfrey has her own 
uh, TV station. They, they came with a good name for it, OWN. Uh -huh. <laughs> OWN, Oprah Winfrey Denver, that's pretty smart, huh? It's her own channel. Uh -huh. So we got black people with channels, we got black people, which Tyler Perry got his own studios. You know, uh, Michael Jordan owns his own team. What, what am I saying? Black people have made a lot of, of, of uh, uh, economic and materialistic achievements. But, but back in the day, in the 70s, did you hear me in the 70s? Somebody say 70s. Yeah, they didn't have all that stuff then. But my daddy was driving a Rolls Royce. In the 70s. Stay with me, I'm not trying to brag, I'm trying to give you an example of something. He was driving, because he was a very successful dentist, and he was driving a Rolls Royce in the 70s. Black man, amen. Guess what? I was his son, so guess what? I had access. Come on, somebody. When the prom came around, I was like, uh, Dad, <coughs> Dad, can you, can you hook a son up? Let me help a, hook a brother, brother, son, help a brother, and let me drive the Rolls Royce to the prom? Guess what he said, Brother Richard? No problem, son. Wow. Here are the keys. Wow. Do you realize that you have a father huh, that has the silver huh, and gold? <laughs> he, has, he has cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> he has everything. And, and all you got to do is say, Daddy, Daddy. Huh, I need a little something, something. Huh? Daddy, can you break your son off with a little bit? I heard in the Bible there was a story of a father. He was a great father. He had a great amount of spoils. His son went to him and said, Daddy, give me the inheritance that belonged unto me. The father knew that the son was young and foolish. He didn't really want to give the son that because the father already knew that the son was going to take it and spend it and waste it on what? Riotous living. But the father gave the son the treasure that belonged unto him. Is anybody listening to me today? What am I trying to tell you? Even though that son was not a great son, he was his son. And even that son, the father gave him his inheritance. How much more if you are a good child to your father and say, Daddy, I need some help. Come on, somebody. Talk to me today. God will hook you up. Just because you're his son. Just because you're his son. You have access. What, what are the things you have access to? And you know, I talk about this every day in my prayer. Watch this, watch this, watch this now. Jesus said, here's how you pray. Give us this day our what? Daily, daily bread. Oh, wait, that means I have daily access. Somebody missed that. That means I have daily access. What do I have daily access to? Watch this now. Daily bread. Watch this now. I have daily access, first of all, to mercy and grace. But don't, 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 don't play me now. That's really important. Somebody said, I need daily mercy and grace. In other words, we fall short daily. I need God's forgiveness. Come on, church. That's a wonderful thing. Say, that's a wonderful thing. I have daily access to his mercy and his grace. But watch what else. I have daily access. You have daily access to his joy and peace. Father, I need some joy and peace today. He said, there you go. You have access to it. Say amen. In the midst of all this stuff, you need access to daily joy and peace. Then watch this. So remember when you're saying, give us this day our daily bread, what's the first thing you're getting? You're getting daily what? Mercy and grace. What's the second thing you're getting? Joy and peace. Daily joy and peace. You can't buy that. I'm sorry. They're not selling it at Costco. Brother Cooper, last time I looked, they didn't have it at Costco. I'm sorry, they ain't got it. They ain't got it at the Sam's Club. No, 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 no. It's the Lord, the Father has this for you. And then what's the third thing you have access to that you can get from the Father every day? Health, divine health and healing. Somebody say, I need that. Somebody say, Father, say Jehovah Rapha. My God, my healer, I need access to your healing. The Bible says he has healing in his wings. In other words, all you got to do is come under his shelter and claim that healing and you shall be healed. Come on, church, talk to me today. So, hey, wait. and then lastly, you have access to sustenance and abundance. You have access to sustenance and abundance. How do you, how do you, how do you know that, Pastor? Because he said that my God shall supply all my needs. In other words, you got a need, God's going to give it. And then watch this. He, it, 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 he's even better than that. He says, he says, I came that you might have life and that you might have it, what? 
more abundantly. Now that's abundance. In other words, that you might have more than enough. Say, I have more than enough. A lot of people, we're all walking around. If you're in America, if you're in America, trust me, you got more than enough. You got more than enough. You got what I got, a good problem. What am I going to do with all this stuff in my garage? What am I going to do with all this stuff in my storage room? What am I going to do with, let's not even go that far, let's go. What am I going to do with all this stuff in my closet? I mean, we just, I mean, just, it's just, hey, I mean, come on. I mean, got all, got stuff upon stuff upon stuff and still trying to buy new stuff. Can I get an amen, somebody? You know why? Because you have access to the grace of God. Give God some praise. But church, 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 I need you to know that when you are a son of God, you have access to everything the Father has. Everything the Father has. You know what? Uh, our children, my children, now I'm going to call them my children. I usually say our, but I'm saying my because it's Father's Day. My children, they have access to our house. They have a key to our house. Yeah, my children, have, did your children have a key to your house, Brother Cooper? My children have a key to my house. Do you know why my children, I'm going to really tell you the honest truth, why my children have a key to my house. Do you really want to know why? Because my father gave me a key to his house. I, I always had a key to 501 West Tishman. So I figured that if my father was so gracious to me to give me, I'm, I'm not talking about just when I lived there. Y'all not hearing me. I'm not talking about just when I lived there. I'm talking about even when I moved out of there. I ain't talking about just when I lived there. It makes sense to give them a key when they live in there. I had a key when I was living there. But I'm talking about when I wasn't there, Brother Ken. I'm talking about when I wasn't living there. I still had a key to Tishner. I could come in there. Martha's trying to say, no, devil, no, stop. She said, but no, that's why I didn't say my mother gave me the key. I said, my father gave me the key. And God has given you the keys to the kingdom. Are you hearing me today? And he said, here's the key to my house. And therefore, my son Walter, my daughter Autumn, my son-in-law Spencer, they have a key to our house. Like even my son-in-law, Spencer, has a key to our house. Thank God he got that sister when he opens the door say, hey, everybody, I'm coming in. They got it. You know, thank God for that. But he has a key. Praise God to my house. You know, recently, uh, my son said uh, to me, he said, you know, Dad, I don't ask you for a lot of things. He said, Dad, I don't ask for a lot of things. And I had to think about that why. I said, you know what, son? You're, you're absolutely right. You're a good son. You don't ask me for a lot of things. I said, but then again, you don't need to. Because everything I have is yours from the time you were born. Everything I have is yours. You have access to it. So, you, yeah, you're right. You don't have, you don't ask me for a lot of things. But then again, you really don't need to ask me for a lot of things. Because what, me casa es su casa. Whatever I have, you have. If I have a dollar, you got 50 cents. If, I mean, let's face it. it you know, you, it, 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 when, when, when my kids come in my house, they don't have my, and then they have my grandson, same way. Come in the house, open up the refrigerator, whatever. Because what? You have access. Come on, church, you got to hear me today. You have access. The Bible says God has all the silver and all the gold. And you sitting up there talking about, I don't know why I should tie. Give me a break. You sitting up there, all you do is blocking your blessing. Turn your name and say, don't block your blessing. Oh, uh, there's a reason that tithing is in the, is in the Bible. Because it, you know what tithing is trying to do? Try, tithing is trying to get you to acknowledge him in all your ways. <laughs> tithing is trying to get you to honor him in all your ways. It's trying to tell you, listen, you need to understand that if you've got, people always ask me this question, should I tithe on this, should I tithe on that, should I tithe on this? If it's an increase, you tithe on it. Did you have it before? No. Th then it was an increase. Where do you think you got it from? Well, my job, your job, nothing. You got that from God. That was a resource. God is the source. God worked through your job to give it to you. God worked through that man to give it to you. God worked through the government to give it to you. Even the government. Listen, hey, God worked through Trump to give me some money. Praise the Lord. I'll take it. Hey, I don't know what y'all talking about. Praise God. I said, praise God. Amen to God. Shoot. But I know who really gave it to me. The Lord. My Father. Who art where? In heaven. Somebody said, hallowed be his name. And then lastly, uh, so because you are great, you know you are great. Because your father is great. Because you have a great father, you know you're great. You, 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 you know that you of this of a great family. So guess what? You no longer have low self-esteem. There is no Christian who should have low self-esteem. 
The only reason that you have low self-esteem if you're a Christian is because you have not been taught right or you have not you have been taught right but you just haven't received the revelation. You need to continue to be taught until the light comes on and you say, wait a minute. Because in the natural, here's what, here's what black people try to do in the natural. There's nothing wrong with this, but this is natural. In the natural, we have black history. Well, I'm proud. I'm the son of kings. I'm the son of queens. Praise God. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. You do the research, you find out that our ancestors are great. In fact, if you really want to, really, the ultimate black history, the ultimate black history is that even the white scientists agree that all races come from one single woman and she was African. So there, there it is right there. There it is. Even the, even the white scientists agree. It was on news. It was on Time magazine. Come on, Richard. Tell me out. Time, news, week, one of them. It, it, it was right there. They said Eve was a black woman. People sitting up there talking about, uh, well, uh, we need to find out some, find some black people in the Bible. The, the whole Bible is filled with black people. But what I'm trying to tell you is that's good in terms of natural history. But what I'm trying to tell you is you have been born again. You have been born of the spirit. You have entered into a spiritual family. And if you've got low self-esteem after you get that revelation, then I don't know who can help you. Then I don't know who can help you. If you don't understand that your father is the... Now listen, you come from in the natural an ancestry of great African kings, but you are now a son of the king of kings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, I'm a son of the king of kings. And then lastly, because you have a great father, you know you can do great things. Because you have a great father, you know you can do great things. And again, uh, this message is dedicated to a lot of people, but it's a special dedication to obviously my dad, my father, Dr. Walter R. Tucker. And here's the thing, because I had this great natural father, I could look and say, hey, this is possible. You know, you, you all know that uh, when I became the mayor of Compton, I became the youngest mayor in the city's 103 year history. My dad had died of cancer and God spoke to me and said uh, in, a, in a dream that I was going to run for the office. God gave a vision to my wife the same exact night, you know that was God. We were in the same bed, the same night, after the funeral, God gave me a dream, but he gave her a vision. You may say, what's the difference? Mine was a dream, Ken. It was a dream of an angel leading me down the courthouse halls, saying, look around at these courtrooms for you shall not see them again. This is, this is the end of your law practice. But the vision, that she had, it was not a dream, it was a vision or a manifestation of my dad's spirit come to my wife, literally holding her down in the bed, telling her, you're gonna have to receive this, your, your husband is getting ready to be the mayor of Compton. This all happened one night. Somebody say, this was spiritual. Was spiritual. But I, I need you to understand the point I'm trying to make is that uh, after this dream and vision, what was also motivating me, in addition to the fact that God was saying this, was the fact that I had seen the example of my father. Yeah. I'd seen the example of what great things he had done to help the community, and therefore I had an example to follow. What I'm telling you is because you have a great father, you can do great things. Guess what? Your, your great example of the Father is Jesus. Your great example, Jesus, the Bible says, is the express image of God. So all you have to do is look unto Jesus. Come on, church, somebody. The author and finisher of your faith. If you can see Jesus forgive, you sit up there talking about, but I just can't forgive them. Yes, you can. If Jesus can be on the cross and say, forgive them for they know not what they do, then guess what? You can say that to your spouse. You can say that to your children. You can even, listen, you can even say that to the racist. Whether they want to hear you or not, you get it out of your heart. Why? Because I have a great example, and that's Jesus Christ. I was having a talk with the Lord today, and I said, Lord, you know, sometimes I get in the flesh like anybody else. I just want to see vindication. I just want to see, and I just want to see the enemy pay for what they've done. And he said, don't you? And he was talking to me. He said, Lord, he said, son, he said, you need to remember. He said, what did I say in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15? He said, Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he made an open show. 
show of the devil. In other words, he had the, like you see them Viking movies or whatever, they take the enemy, head and they got it on a stake. He said he had the devil's head on a stake and he was parading around heaven and he was saying, I got him, I got him, he's defeated, he's defeated. You need to look in the spirit because one day you're going to really see it fully. But the point of the matter is uh, we, 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 we see in part, we prophesy in part, but the devil has been defeated. Don't believe the lies that the, that the enemy wins, that we lose. We have the victory. Are you hearing me, church? Yes. Father, we just thank you. We bless you and we praise you, Father, that because you are great, we know we're great. We don't need anybody to validate us. The Holy Spirit himself has borne witness, has testified that we are children of the great I am. And then, Father, because we have a great Father, we know that we have access to great things. We have access to every great thing, spiritual and natural. We have access to mercy and grace. We have access to joy and peace. We have access to uh, uh, healing and divine health. We have access to uh, sustenance and to, and to abundance. We have access to everything we need to succeed. And then, then Father, glory to God. We know that because you're a great Father, we can do great things. We can do great things. We saw how Jesus laid hands on the sick and they recovered. We can do that in his name. We saw how Jesus cast out demons. We can do that in his name. We saw how Jesus could forgive even the unforgivable. We can do that in his name. And we saw how Jesus could spread that gospel and change people's lives forever. And I'm here today to declare a decree that we can do that in Jesus' name. That's the greatest thing that we can do is to share the love of God. The love of Jesus Christ with a lost and dying world. And in the name of Jesus, I believe and declare that everybody listening under the sound of my voice, you're going to do great things. Because like the old saying goes, every generation should be better than the next. And this one's going to prove it out in Jesus' name. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We never want to finish our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to be born again, to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, because that is, no doubt about it, it's not even close, that is the greatest decision of your life. Well, I thought, who you married it? No, no. It can't be the greatest decision, because the Bible says there's no marriage in heaven. So that's a great decision, but that's just for life. But when you make the decision for Christ, that's for eternal life. That's forever. That's the greatest decision of your life. So would you please, if you're not born again, if you've not made that great decision, this is your opportunity on Father's Day to come into a great family, always have a great father, have great access to all great things, and to be able to do great things that will have eternal value. Pray this prayer with me. Everybody loud enough to hear your voice and encourage your neighbor. Pray with me. Say, God, God I'm sorry for my sins. Sorry for my I, believe I believe that you, that you sent your son Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ into the earth, into the earth to, be sin, to be born without sin, to live without sin, without sin to, die to, to die to pay for sin, and to rise from the dead to, the to prove he conquered sin. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save me, and be my Lord. And I promise to love you forever. And I believe that in you, I'm great. I have access to great things. And I can do great things in Christ the Lord. Give God some praise one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Looking here at all the saints here, I see nothing but saints. So we praise God for that. And I've got just... Uh, a few announcements and then we're going to end with a wonderful uh, praise dance that we have been uh, looking forward to. Praise God. Sister Lottie is here and ready to do the praise dance. But before we do that, we're going to praise God. Uh, take up our offering. Amen. Truth and love. Yeah. What time is it? Time to and why do we get in? And God loves what? Do we have any cheerful givers in the house? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand, a little wave offering. Give God a little wave offering. Praise God. We thank you. Uh, if you're with us out there, this is your opportunity to sow into us. And you do it by faith, hope, and love. Uh, the word of God says in Luke 6.38, it says, give, and it shall be given to you. Who are you giving to? You know, some people, some people um, miss it. You know, they think that this is about giving to the pastor. You can give to the pastor. Praise God. That's called a pastoral love offering. But no, your tithe is what you give to the Lord. Like I said today, God blesses you with increase and you give him right off the top. Somebody say off the top. Say out of the gross. Yes. So we thank God for your tithes. We thank God for your offerings. And uh, there should be an offering confession up there, Sister Karen, can you get that to me? Hallelujah. There we go. Let's say it together. We believe and declare that as we faithfully give to the Lord, God will bless us with more grace, peace, health, and wealth so that we can advance the kingdom of heaven in the earth in Jesus' holy name. Up on the screen, you will see how you can give. There's a, a cash tag up there, dollar sign, truth and love, CC. You can give that way. Uh, and you can give that way whether you're here or whether you're at home. We thank God for that. Praise the Lord. And then you can also give uh, by sending a check, money order, what have you, to Truth and Love Christian Church at this address right here. And you can leave that up on the board for a moment while we just sing this with me. Sing this with me. Give and it shall come back to you. Come on, somebody. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. One more time now. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. Give and it will come back to you. The cash app. When you give, give to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And that's how you can give. Amen. And uh, for those of you here, you can give as the steward uh, passes by or you can give as you exit uh, the building and there will be the offering box there. A couple of very, very quick announcements and then we're going to